Well, I just got done watching Netflix's brand new anime film coming July 5th, and that is called The Imaginary. This is about Rudger, a boy who no one can see, is imagined by Amanda to share her thrilling make-believe adventures. But when Rudger arrives alone at the town of Imaginaries, where forgotten Imaginaries live and find work, he faces a mysterious threat. Now... I am always interested in anime, and any time I get the offer or the chance to jump on an anime film or an anime series, I'm always going to try my best to make time for it, and I'm very excited that I was able to make time for The Imaginary, because I quite enjoyed it. Now, this is from a director who I don't think has directed anything of known Nins, but they are a famous animator who primarily worked on Spirited Away, which is personally one of my favorite anime films of all time, if not my favorite, and also one of my favorite movies of all time. So the fact that I knew that you get a famous animator who, again, worked on one of my favorites of all time and is now going to be working on this. Well, yeah, I have to check it out. And the whole concept of imaginary friends in an anime film also really intrigues me. Also on the same fact that we also got If earlier this year from John Krasinski, another take on imaginary friends. And then if we look back towards my childhood, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends is one of my favorite cartoon shows growing up as well. So this was kind of just all around the ballpark kind of film that I needed to watch and watching it. I'm going to say that it kind of surprised me, specifically after like watching the first 10 minutes. I didn't know if I was going to feel for this, and I'm very excited to talk about this movie today, so make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button, and without further ado, let's dive into my pro. So the number one thing I love talking about is the animation in this film is gorgeous. Whether it comes down to the 2D and 3D vibrant vibes that they kind of place into here or all the little character designs, I always found myself very intrigued to see what the next frame or the next piece of action would be. And speaking of this film having imaginary friends in it, it is very imaginative. It's creative at times. You see a lot of Rutgers like owner and who you know, brought him to life and her imagination. And I like that within the first 20 minutes, you kind of get a vibe for this all. And, you know, they mentioned work in this town of imaginaries. And I like what that work actually ended up being. And I find that to be one of the most gorgeous parts about this, because I think for us, it takes you back to your childhood when you maybe played with your imaginary friend or just in general played with your friends and you just imagine this entire landscape, whether the floor was lava or you sat in a box and made it into like an entire spaceship. There's just so many countless different ideas. And this film kind of centered me back and brought me back to those worlds. But at the same time, what this film really did was, besides making me feel like a kid again, it also added this sense of danger and mysteriousness. And imagine if an older man who's kind of stalking your imaginary friend can also see your imaginary friend. And maybe they have an imaginary friend that looks like something from The Grudge, which I was like, not, a, I was not a fan of that because The Grudge is like absolutely terrifying to me. But I like how they made her look in this and I like how they played up that style for me like that whole creative aspect of this movie is what really brought me into it. Now, I don't think this movie's perfect. I have some of my issues and I'll talk about that later. For me, it's the whole aspect of, you know, wanting to find that friend that really much has given you your entire life. The whole parallel of seeing how he's just left alone and the whole lore and mythology of building up what these imaginaries are. I think for me was one of the more interesting aspects of the movie was the mythology and the lore of this. Again, this film is just breathing and really much vibrantly coming to life from the creativity, from the animation, but as well from the story design and what they were able to craft here. Reasons being is the reason that the imaginary was personally for me one of my favorite things that I've seen this year so far from the animation medium. It's a movie that you should check out and I, I was actually a little bit surprised that this was PG. It does get a little bit dark with the villain of the story and primarily what he wants to do but it worked and it reminded me of some old school stuff that I used to watch as a kid personally for me one of the only big issues that I have with the film is either the film feels a tad bit too short or they took a little bit too long to actually get into the premise of the entire story I understand what they were trying to do within building up certain aspects of the story but I wish there was a better way that they could have done that specifically in how the story actually plays out through the entire middle portion. But maybe I'm just being a little bit selfish because I was so into the lore and the mythology and all the different imaginaries that you eventually get to meet within the story. A lot of ways what I love about a lot of anime films is the fact that they can touch on other serious moments even if they are having a lot of fantasy elements to it. And the way that this film touches on love, loss, 
and very much what our imagination can do for our own self-esteem and really much just to get us through the hardest times. I think Imaginary is one of those winning films that I highly recommend. To tie up this review, The Imaginary is in a unique creative anime movie and one of the ones that I think should be up there with like, if we can give the boy and the heron some love, then absolutely Imaginary deserves that same type of love. Is it a perfect movie? No, I think there was a couple things that they could have had missed opportunities on when it came down to the story aspect of the characters and in general, the mythology and lore and building up and just some things that I wanted a little bit more of on that. But I overall really was entertained by the characters. I was entertained by the story and I did actually start to feel something towards the back half of the film. And when I can come away and sway away and saying, I would recommend this movie and I'm actually really excited to watch it again, I think you will as well. So with all that said, I'm gonna give The Imaginary a B plus. Thank you so much again guys for watching this. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like, subscribe button, and of course until next time, stay classy.